September, me and a bunch of other people got together and decided we would watch Scary Godmother and then annotate in a Google Doc our collective thoughts. Today, I wanted to put that into an hour-long video essay slash retrospect. I wanted this video to be more about nostalgia, the general milieu of the current times regarding how we process Halloween in the 2020s with the rise of Trunk or Treat, and what Scary Godmother means to me and to the whole of YouTube, especially with all the other video essays and retrospects that have already been done. And I intend to be another wonderful add-on with respect to everyone who's come before. <laughs> also, shout out to Neo Scary Godmother for uploading all of this media and is is that Walter? I've also compiled a playlist of others' video essays on Scary Godmother because YouTube loves this movie and that's amazing because I love it too. And shout out to all y'all because I can't wait to add to the annals of history here. And if you've done a video essay or retrospect on Scary Godmother and want me to add it to this playlist, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Born on November 20th, 1966, Jill Thompson became an American illustrator later in her life for Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, The Invisibles, Swamp Thing, and Wonder Woman. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Scary Godmother falls under Dark Horse Comics, which is in, like insane to me. Because that's also Lucifer, that weird cop show, and Hellboy. Also, some fun facts about Thompson before we get into the real meat and potatoes here is that apparently she's an avid gardener, which is like, you know, me too, girl. And she also improvised at Second City, which apparently I often hear has connections with SNL or something like that. And as you can see right here on her Wikipedia page, she has awards spanning from 1998 to 2011, and as of 2022, she's been getting some notable and wonderful charity work. Shout out to Miss Thompson herself. Whoa. According to Penguin Random House, much like in the movie, Jimmy is mean, and Hannah Marie is the main character, female protagonist, who is interested in facing her fears way more than Jimmy is. However, what? What's going on? What's going on here? It says. It says. Unravel a mystery? Wait, this had plot? This had a plot?! Watching the beginning of this movie again, I'm reminded of a point from one of the previous video essays I watched that said that the backgrounds are more vivid than the outlines of the main characters. An interesting point to critique, but I never really let it ruin it for me. And of course, we're going to see eventually that Hannah's eyes are way more big and detailed than everyone else's. Whew. Oh my god! Fun fact about that phrase! That's actually the full phrase of the phrase, speak of the devil? I just thought you should know. Education, the more you know. Stay sharp, kiddos. One of the reasons why I think it's important to establish Scary Godmother's previous media with the comics, or even this random play that happened one time. Boo. Pull up some clips of it, maybe, maybe, maybe. Is because being foreshadowing and apropos actually happens in the first movie, prior to the second movie, with Hannah's sense of resourcefulness and creativity. Hannah's resourcefulness for Daryl being a mean piece of candy foreshadows her role in the second movie, where when Jimmy destroys everything, she just finds ways to make it cuter and more Halloween-esque. And I say all of this, and give such a preamble, because Scary Godmother, as it turns out, is of course this wonderful passion project by a very talented woman, with a lore of comic book history behind it, since the Scary Godmother comics came out all the way back in 1997, literally a year after I was born, I mean... <laughs> the Sandman, The Invisibles, Swamp Thing, and Wonder Woman. In fact, I'm pretty sure Wonder Woman... nope. <laughs> and as you can... Ooh, ha, he, who, ha, he, ha, be, and so, that's just very important to me. And this is going to be a video giving respect to that sentiment. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, oh, uh, hey everybody, it's Ryan Sierra, and I'm here with my, uh, you know her, you know her. It's my noodle. What's up, everybody? We're watching Scary Godmother right now, and I wanted to give some commentary. So, hello. Yes. We're watching Scary Godmother Halloween Spectacular DVD quality, and thank you to Neo Scary Godmother. This was six years ago in the ripe era of 2018, so. <laughs> yeah, all right, so we watched this a bit ago and took some notes on it, um, and yeah, you know, thank you to Jim, Jill Thompson, Jimmy Thompson here, and without further ado, I'm going to start with mine. I like how beginning of Neighborhood looks so lived in. And then you get the cameo of the MCs before they actually come together, originally with Daryl, Katie, Burt there, in the beginning with the with the moon. I don't know if I need yes. to scroll back with the with the moon. You sort of yeah, there's Jimmy at that door right there. It's like, oh that's that's clever. And then Fruit of the Loom, I guess. Also, okay, character from from uh, Life is Strange. Did not know we had a Life is Strange model in here. What was that? <laughs> do we do we we missed that? 
Yo, dude, wait. There's a kid. There's a character in here. Straight up. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right. So, uh, originally, of course, when the kids come together, you have this Daryl, Katie, Bert, and then you have a, a dumb Van Window joke. I didn't think that joke was very funny, but you know what? It's fine because this movie is chock full of like it's like weird like uh, under the radar adult jokes. So, especially when, yeah, when Scully. When Scully comes in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um... Let's see, Jimmy's friend... What did you think of the beginning here? Let me scroll down to your, your section. Oh, yeah, Where's your section? Here we go. Where Small's Noodles section? Thoughts at 10.06pm, 9-3-2023. We watched this all the way back in September! Jesus! Good Crazy. God. Yeah. Yeah, because then God you went back good. in... Evan... And, like, yeah. um, did some B-roll. All right, so here's my thoughts. So, the beginning... Because you said B. Hold on. Let me get it. You're kind of at the bottom here. You said, the beginning reminds you a tad of Nightmare Before Christmas in terms of color and scale. And there's lots more yeah. earthy tones, lots of yellow and greens. Yeah, so we got some lots of earthy tones, lots of yellow and greens. I thought it reminded me of Nightmare just because Nightmare Before Christmas, if I remember correctly, opened on a town in the yeah. same way. Um, and then I thought the animation is very smooth, yet the skin seems very plastic, um, and the eyes are a bit too cartoony, uh, too, too cartoony and too smooth, but the mouth does move well with the voice acting. Um... Typically, I think with films that are not, you know, either in Pixar, Disney, or Illumination, or that might be still Pixar, um, they tend to have really weird uh, animation styles, and um, this one just felt very, like, I, I, could, I could melt it. And it was a bit too uncanny in that way, where, like, I could never kind of get invested until much later in the story. You, you could melt it? Like, the characters feel like candle wax? Mm-hmm. I see it's that. Like, I see that. And so, like, and then the eyes, like, I wish the eyes would have been, um... I wish there would have been a bit more life to them instead of just the main character. Uh, hmm. to kind of feel like it's it's too easy to like they're already assholes. Like <laughs> you give them eyes at least, you know, like you don't need to make them have those eyes to make them stand out as villains, you know. Yeah, I guess, interesting. Yeah, because the other because the other kids weren't like they were bullies and they participated in it, but they still weren't as egregious as Jimmy was. So if you're gonna like not have him have the eye. If you're going to have him have those eyes, it would have made more sense. Like him have the sharp, small, soulless eyes? Yeah, like if you're trying yeah. to distinct them, that would have been. And I do like that the mouth moves with the voice acting, because sometimes, even in our old, beloved video games, you look back at the animation with the voice acting, and it's not great. And so I do like that even though this is old, that the voice acting does voice sounds childlike. So I'm like, what, I wonder where the, who, the, who were the voice actors? In this? Um, I think Hannah's voice actor is like a teenager. Hmm. Cause there actually is like a behind the scenes, like meet the cast and crew. So. Hmm. Okay. There, yeah. I, I got to send you the video. There's like a meet the cast of scary godmother. And I think she's like a teenager, like, like, not not as young as the character, like, because, like, Hannah's supposed to be, like, 8 or 10. I think the voice actress was, like, 14, 13. Well, it's still close enough, though. Yeah. I mean, at our ages, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. And you said it's a similar feeling to Coraline. This has a similar feeling oh. I get watching Coraline, where the animation seems realistic in some aspects, and I feel myself being able to touch it physically. I'm so analytical. Oh, my God. <laughs> You wish the background had some sort of movement, like wind or clouds. So wind is earth, a fire, and air. We may look bad, but we yeah. don't care. Well, because um, what's yeah. the background? Like, there's a lack of movement. Like, it's not... I get I'm an adult, 
and a kid's not going to be probably as, like, nitpicky as I am. Yeah. But, like, when I was younger and I was watching Coraline, a lot of what made it believable was the fact that, of, like, you know, the lights and the shadows and the pot and sometimes the wind and the movement of the set. And I understand there's a difference between animation and clay animation, but, like, I don't know. Like, there's something... I take this movie very much as, like, a silly thing. Um, yeah. There's no part of me that really believes the world until we get later into the film with the adult characters. Um, but, like, there's a lack of of life other than the, and even with the, the bully characters and with Hannah, um, there's still that lack of life and that lack of movement. It's very stilled. It's very suspended in disbelief until the plot needs it. So I kind of wish it would have, like, you would have seen, like, the wind breathing and other little kids you know, walking down the street, you know, um, someone at the graveyard or whatever, or like, just, just wait, like, make me believe you are not in animation. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that hmm. sounds too negative of a, uh, what does it mean? Pre- but then what does this mean at point 13? You said the blur isn't bad. Um, I'd have to watch it again. Cause it says, oh, okay, yeah. and it- I say the blur isn't bad. I assume in animation, there is a blur technique because people do it with the, you know, the edits of like the Hobbit and like Mortal Kombat. I show you, there's a technique yeah. called blur. Okay. Uh, and it, uh, so I think that's what I'm meaning here or they blurred the character and it wasn't terrible. I would have to watch to figure figure that out. Um, yeah. And then I go, what is it, after 13, I say... Well, it's funny how you say at 10, you're like, there's a bit of rushing with the characters trying to hit the beats of the plot, but it's not too bad, yeah. but noticeable enough to wish you could have slowed it down. And then you're like, number 15, the, pacing the pacing's bad. a bit rushed. You're like, F this. <laughs> well, like, I think half of, and this is for all kid movies, I say this for all kid movies. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like they are trying to skip a rock towards the next story. And in hmm. between those skips, those little things where it hits the water is like tiny things they want to put in and like slide in before it hits, the, you know, its destination. Yeah. And sometimes the pacing was... Um, the pacing was both rushed and slow, and it's very hard to, um, a lot of, not just this movie, but a lot of animation, like, uh, sometimes Naruto had this issue, Bleach has this issue, definitely, it makes no sense. Um, I've been watching, watching some Bleach recently. <laughs> No, but, like, from what I remember, because I used to, I gave Bleach three different tries, and I couldn't get into it, because it was both mm. rushed and slow, at the, like, it, it just, I couldn't do it. So Anime like, had such a different vibe back then. Forever to meet Hannah. Hannah's the main character. Why are we seeing the bullies first? You know? I don't know yeah. who these fucking kids are. I guess she doesn't come in until four who, who are, minutes. Who in, like, are they? Hourish long, 40, 40 minute long movie. 45, yeah. You know, so, like, you don't show... Yeah, like, you don't show... You don't give us an establishing scene of, this is Hannah. This is her, you know, psychopathic cousin. These are his friends. We don't get a scene where the parents go, hey, Jimmy, why don't you take Hannah to trick-or-treat just this once? And then Jimmy's like, I don't want to do it. She's young, and she's scared of everything. We don't get those scenes. We are not introduced. Because me, I've never read the comics. I've never read the books. So when I watch the scene, I'm like, who the fuck is this? I don't think most people have. I discovered the comics later. (laughs) No, but but yeah, but the thing is, like, but you have seen them versus someone who hasn't. And so it's very confusing. 
to be dropped in a world, and I have no idea who nobody is. I don't know where we're at. I don't know who this kid is. Is he the main character? I don't know. So the yeah, pacing, I feel like the first movie doesn't even have a. You, you know, it's funny you're talking about placing pacing. Oh, oh, happy Halloween! I feel like the first movie doesn't have like a plot. <laughs> It is it is hero's journey without plot because what it is is it's the hero's journey without plot because all she really does all it really is is it's back and forth between like going to the party and then the kids waiting outside the house and we swap back to the party and then the kids are outside the house for like 40 minutes and you know and, and but in that time what it is is Hannah is meeting these different monsters and stuff and and you know learning this you know, this sort of commentary of, like, you know, accepting people's differences because, like, you know, it's it's a matter of these monsters are not that spooky when you get to know them, you know. Um, but aside from that yeah. moral tale, like, she's just, it's sort of just happening, right? Like, um, there's no, like, you have to go out over here and do this thing, you know. A bit more of that, of course, happens in the second movie, but. Yeah, so it's, and you know, you bring that up, too. Where the poop like, house? Yeah. What? <laughs> They're going into the Pookie Bear house. The Pookie Bear house. Oh, they're going to the Pookie Bear house. Um, but yeah, no, I... When you bring up that plot thing, too, which is what I also have to say about pacing, um, like, we get dropped into this world. And... It takes us four minutes. And even when we meet Hannah, there's an indication she's the main character because she's the one they put the most effort into animation-wise. Yeah. Um, not a dig on the on the animation people. I'm just saying it, it's a clear indicator that she is I the mean, main it, character. I mean, it's kind of anime in a certain regard because you know how in anime the main character has, like, the craziest hair? At least, you know, in, like, a lot of old shonen mm-hmm. anime. Like... That's how that's how it is. Like here, it's like the main character has the widest eyes. Yeah. So so you know she's, but it's still unestablished because we never got a introduction. Like I don't know why Jimmy is fucking that mean. I don't understand why he's that angry at a young child. Yeah. Like it's it's almost like it's so weird. And it keeps. So, I think it it continuously will age worse as time goes on and you know, standards for treating ourselves and each other better, like, get better. But back in the day, it was easily read that, like, Jimmy was just, like, a sort of emotionally repressed, like, older brother or cousin or something because he's, like, obviously he's trying to be, he's trying to be machismo. He's trying to be, like, macho. He's all like, haha, you know, I'm the big kid. I'm gonna tease my little girl cousin, you know, and then you know, Hannah, of course, is very much... And, of course, Jimmy doesn't... You know, the payoff is that, of course, Hannah learns better from this. And Jimmy uh, just kind of gets more disturbed in the second movie. Well, but the thing is, is too, is we don't... We assume, right? We're assuming. We're kind of just... But we don't get that. You know, most animation movies, with this premise... I'm saying, like, you know, with the premise of an older relative being an ass, they at least give us five minutes of an establishing thing. You know, like, with Up, specifically. Up has a premise where he has to learn, and he has to adapt. And this new kid movie... No, I agree. Because, as someone who ha- who is not familiar with the books and with, and with the characters, we go from one to a hundred within like you know it's like why like th- is this kid okay <laughs> like this is beyond just you know a, 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 ki- a kid who doesn't want to hang out with his relative and wants to scare her this is like psychopathic shit like he's yeah. walking her in a house and who knows who's in that house you know and I'm thinking this as an adult I'm like you don't know if there's someone who's squatting there and yeah. sees this little kid <laughs> You know, they don't like, have squatters you know, in this like, neighborhood. <laughs> it's the well, it's the platonic ideal know. animation neighborhood. <laughs> well, like, you know, you, you don't know, like, because what if she trips and she, she sprains her ankle? Well, you don't know because yeah. you've locked her in here and you're laughing at her. So it's like, 
there is no context and there's no pretense to why he is this angry and why he is this mean. And even though we're told through the other characters, oh, well, you know, it's because she's a crybaby and I'm the older relative and I'm going to scare the crap out of her because I didn't want to trick or treat with her. It's like, that's later in the movie and that's sh- with a different scene, we should have gotten that way earlier. We also should have known who these people are instead of just being dumped on. But, like, the pacing, I feel like the plot truly does not start until she gets into the house. Like, it, it does not start whatsoever. Um, and to me, that's bad pacing. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't feel like the movie is a master class then- in pacing. Yeah. Well, no, no, and I'm just, and I like the movie. I'm just saying that plot-wise, it does not start so she gets in the house. That's where we get the most in terms of characters. I agree. I yeah. do think we could have we could have not had the back and forth that you brought up, where oh she's it's like oh she's having a party, she's living it up, and then it's like her cousin. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Realistically, they would have. That, they, that would have like, it would have been like 10 to 15 minutes that they probably would have stayed there and yet it felt like hours <laughs> like why yeah. are you like, you know that even makes him more of an asshole like why are you trapping your little cousin yeah. or your little sister in a house for hours like what is wrong with you so it's and like, of course like he's like gone. scared right like he's like do we go in do we not go in I don't know yeah. yeah, it's like, what do you mean? You put a, a I'm assuming, a, you know, eight-year-old child in there in a house by herself who could trip and cut herself on God knows what because it's an abandoned house. Let's remember that. So yeah. who knows what type of diseases and stuff is in there. And then you go, yeah. oh, should we go in? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, you alternate universe, alter, yeah, alternate universe scary godmother is just Hannah, like, becoming like a Cronenberg monster after getting into some toxic waste yeah. in that house. Like, yeah, this because scary god mother never shows up. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I would have preferred her, like, you know, learning, being in this house, and then we get a scene later on. We don't get this back and forth. We get a scene where, like, they're playing in the graveyard, and they're like, where's Hannah? And then they're like, oh, shit, we locked her. You know, like, she's still in the house. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been more interesting is if they sort of played back in that graveyard area that was by the the Pookie Bear house, and what ends up happening is they just get sidetracked because they're also just, like, kids. Um, And then what it could have done was it it still could have illustrated, like, a sort of carelessness, but it it would have been much less sadistic, whereas, like, if they're outside the house all the time, it's just Jimmy basically being an ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, we get a scene, they're playing in the graveyard, and then like, oh crap, we left her in there. And you could yeah. still had the revenge of, you know, the monsters. But it would have been a lot, a lot more, oh, he played a prank. It wasn't a good prank. It wasn't even a funny prank. It was, it was a sadistic prank, but he played it and then he forgot. You know, then he, and then, you know, he was being a kid with his friends. And then he remembered, and so the so then yeah. it would have been less because looking throughout the movie, this kid needs like psychological help. Yeah, like way he's way too harsh on a little child. Oh, look at that ghost come out of that jack o' lantern! She's looking around for some for some uh, some Graham, you know. She's like, how do we get how can we get this party started without some Graham, dude? <laughs> okay, here Yo, we're, we're Uncle Graham. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, the door's yeah, no, so, opening. And here we have... Yo, she's so scared it's about the Scully. doorknob. Scully! Scoliosis! That's Scully not scoliosis. The... It's just bad posture. <laughs> it's just bad bones. Well, we'll there's get like better a bones. Dresser in a pump jack-o'-lantern, like, just by the staircase. That is how you know you have a big house. So let's say you have Scully and Harry make a funny duo. Tell me about your feelings. So it's we very much covered. Like yes, okay. Um, you know, the, Jimmy is like 
overcooked in terms of in terms of machismo, you know, or at least you know feigning machismo, young boy archetype. Um, let's uh, let's talk about the guests at the party. Yes. So I did say I uh, I liked. Um, let's see. This Boo, ha- are you, you can tell this, ha- uh, this house um, also was really designed uh, well in terms of what they wanted to show us because Scully comes out very flamboyant, very much like, you know, he's got a personality, he's got a sense of style, um, you know, he's kind of funny in that way. And, you know, he's very, you can tell he's the, he's kind of like an uncle stand-in. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like he's that funny, like, you know, uncle that, you know, you get along with and that you see. Um, but he's also very sensitive in terms of two kids, like, emotions and such. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like because, how you said, it's, you know, it's very Monsters, like Inc. Me. It's very Monsters, Inc. Yeah, it's he's a, very, you know, it's a, good, it's a good rapport he has with Hannah. Um... The interaction between Scully, yeah, it's very cute. Uh, and then I believe the next one I have is said, "Damn, he just made a kid faint." Um, which... um. Oh, I, I, I. Oh, yep. At twenty-seven, damn, he just made a kid yep, faint. Laugh emo- laugh, cry emoji, dude. Yeah, laugh, cry emoji. And then I think the transitions are very nice and cool to watch. I did like the transitions because I thought they did do transitions very well. I just Yo, here don't we like go, the that music. plot of the transitions. Um, yeah, I said these bully characters are kind of bland except for the kid with the red hat. Harry is such a delight. I live for his transition. Um, I do like Harry. Uh, he is a... Uh, a no- he is um, Andy What was that Bumblebee girl doing? Rock. Harry is Annie from Parks and Rec. Yo! I could kind of see that. He's literally the werewolf version of Andy from Parks and Rec. Um, He's the werewolf. Now, Harry's a little bit more villainized, whereas Andy is just, like, stupid. Maybe, you know what it is? Harry is Chris Pratt in real life. That's what it is. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, No, that makes me not like Harry anymore. Uh, (laughs) No, Harry, I feel like Harry's villainized because he's bumbling. Like, it definitely it definitely gives off the fact that it, it definitely, like, Harry has ADHD. And it definitely feels like the he's writers a, he's a or something. Boy. Or, it definitely feels like the writers definitely, uh, definitely didn't like didn't like that or, or wanted to make him seem annoying. Where he's like, you know, because of ADHD and how it's portrayed as like, you know, oh, they're all over the place and they're forgetful and they're this and they're that. And they're very mean to him. They're almost like mean to him in the way that Jimmy's mean to Hannah. Oh my God. Are you like, in defense like, of Harry right now? Yo, like, hot takes. Hot takes on this retrospect. <laughs> hot takes. Um, fuck uh, Scary Godmother. Dude, uh, Harry is literally the seven deadly sin of, of gluttony. I think. Yeah, or... but like, the thing oh shit, here he comes. They're like, oh, wolf okay. boy. You know, they're literally, you know, they literally like treat him like a, like, you know, like a freaking spider. They're like hitting him and always belittling him. And then they're like, oh, Jimmy's an asshole. Let's teach him a lesson. Let's not retrospect on our behavior at all. I do think there's some interesting. F- <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. I'm eating so many brownies right now. Oh my god. Did you make brownies? No, I, no, it's the freaking the dude, the little Debbie cookies and cream brownie. Oh, this is like two months old, but it's got all the nitrates. And- list you oh, have on point 40 you have why did he show up as a guest if he owns the house uh who are you referencing there because i i forget i think i meant harry harry owns this house bro because remember yeah it's his house 
I and he shows up with peak cloth. I totally forget. Also, I'm so dumb. I should have. Oh no, captions weren't available. You didn't put captions, Neil Scary Godmother. <laughs> anyway, no big deal. NBD. Um, no big deal disorder. But no, I, it, it, he shows up. But they're like, "This is his house," and I'm like, "Why did he show up with pizza then? Why didn't yeah. he just order it? Why are you guys in this in this man's house like this?" <laughs> Yeah, and then below like, that you have the tone is a bit jarring between him? Hannah and Monsters. But that's, I even referenced that because I was like, one of the things that makes this movie and also like makes it like not have really a lot of plot is like the just the shift between the kids and the, the monster party. Like, I'm like, yeah. So meaningless. The dance sequence is funky, dude. Yo. When's that dance sequence? Because I know we got we, we just got the intro right now. We're I'm 18 minutes in. We just got the intro a bit ago where like they just made the party because Scarlet Godmother uh, blew magic ash and summoned up Chinese paper lanterns. But um, Jimmy is such an ass. Why did he think that was it? Ooh ooh, we're getting the the make a sandwich. It's it's crackers and it's pe- strawberry and it's peanut butter because because grape jelly is more for summer. But strawberry is fall, obviously, because it's red, like, red. Man, can you imagine giving out, like, crackers on Halloween? Can you like, imagine a... letting kids come up with cooking ideas? Dumb as fuck. <laughs> I wonder if, like, Jill wanted to, like, make something else, and they were like, dude, that's way too complicated. This is, like, for children. <laughs> um... Jimmy, let's see. The, children. the kids are dumb AF. <laughs> Again, these kids are dumb, but Red Hat and Catsuit aren't bad. Yes, Red Hat. Oh, um, uh, Bert. His name is I forgot Bert. Their name. Ooh, we're getting the vampires. We're getting the vampires just showed up right now. What did you say about the vampires? Oh, I said, um, that I really, oh, where the vampire family uh, makes such a good contrast to the more eccentric characters. Also, wait, did you forget their names? Remember, remember, uh, kid, with the base, kid with the baseball hat is Bert. The blonde kid that's dressed up as a piece of butterscotch candy is Daryl. And the girl is Yumi. Uh, she helps save Code Lyoko. So, obviously. Um, let's see. Uh, she, she must have her own name. I don't know if it's freaking Emily, uh, but it's, it's Yumi. So, it's Yumi to me. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, um, the vampires but, don't come in because they need yeah. to be invited. Yeah, I like the vampire uh, couple. The vampire couple is a very kid-friendly version of um, Morticia and Gomez. So yes, yes, it, I I love th- when this couple. I think the okay. So here's the thing, by the way, if you want to talk about the movie, kind of moving a little slow. Um, I feel like the yeah. plot or whatever you can consider the plot, really doesn't pick up until you get the vampires. Because then That's you have very- Hannah meeting, you know, her sort of, you know, equal, right? Which is Orson. Um, and then you have the sort of adult jokes being made under the radar with the vampire couple, Max and Ruby or something. Um, and, which, is that not like a kid show about bunnies? I don't know. And what's funny is... They end up making, like, a JFK joke or something. They end up making, like, a Lincoln joke. Yeah, like, they're, like, talking later on. Later on in the movie, there's a joke where um, where Max goes, like, So other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the show? And, like, everyone looks confused. And when we get to the scene, I, I might point it out, I might forget. But, like, everyone looks confused. And Hannah looks terrified because <laughs> she gets it. I'm like, oh, I missed that, man. Missed that the first time around. Hannah's homeless. Dude. Yeah, I do like the dope. Hannah is homeless, actually. That's why <laughs> she's in the graveyard. Yeah. Um, no, I do like yeah. the jokes that are made for adults, clearly. Yeah. Um, you have Werewolf X Skeleton. Like that you that... ship Harry and Scully? Yeah. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be cute. <laughs> I mean, come on. They're both clearly gay. Harry? that yes the plot actually really starts with the vampire couple but it begins as soon as they start setting up the house decorations 
So the yeah. house truly, if we were going to start the movie, we should have started the movie at the house. But that, you know, that's whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, oh, God. Anyway, I don't uh, um, Harry might, oh, might be... Uh, that's what I was going to say. Harry's not a very introverted. super gay. I don't know why I said me. I assume they do yeah. something that I thought was me like. Yo, Ophelia Tata, uh, Tim Burton. This is definitely an homage to Tim Burton stuff. Look into my eyes. You want a hot dog. You want a hot dog really bad right now. What's that meme on Facebook going around with that blonde chick saying you want a hot dog? So he'd be <laughs> bi, is what you say? Sure. Um, no doubt, but let's see. Um, I love this vampire couple. The vampire wife has such beautiful eyes. Oh, yeah! Holy moly! Okay, oh, so yeah, just noticed the vampire woman, um, Nadia, over here, uh, has, like, eyes. Oh, shit. What up? It's Dat Boy. We're, uh, who, we're about to get... We're about to get... Uh, Pookie Bear! You oh my God. want the hot dog? Super bad. He's, he's spit everywhere. Dude, I would scream if I was handed to This dude just All right, let's see. We're on the list. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, they're just introducing um, Bugaboo right now. The big Monsters, Inc. character. It's a lot like Monsters, Inc. in this I never thought about making that comparison because I was very, very young when Monsters, Inc. came out. And I did watch it, but yeah. Oh my god, your point in 50 is just introverts. And then 51, me. <laughs> yeah, she's really, she has like blue eyes. It's Mafia really vibes stunning. with the garlic. Mafia vibes with the garlic. And then you have, I love Bugaboo and Hannah. They are so cute. Hey, yo. Jimmy is a legit psychopath. Um, Why is he hitting on his cousin so much? I said is that... Catch that flashlight. Ugh. Gross. And then you have... I think the next um, thing... What are you, what are you gonna say? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, I love Bugaboo and Hannah. They're so cute. Rated um, X scene with Bugaboo. They definitely, though. <laughs> big and scary, scary looking. He's big and mean and scary looking. Yo, me every year yeah, no, when I, I hand out candy. I also like the fact that they're very mafia about the garlic. They're like, no, God. What are you trying to do over here, Kazumar scene? You know how I get with the garlic. It, yeah, it's me. I don't know what I'm meaning at. They did something that was very me-like that I don't know. Yeah. And then you've got... <laughs> the pizza, uh, you know it's a you know it's a kid's movie, though, is when pizza's always mentioned. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Like, like pizza is but, the marketing of America. Yeah. Does that mean you'll stay? Then I have, let's see. The plot, the the plot comment is such a good. Oh, we get yeah! dance. We finally get the dance yeah, montage so now. Um, Yo, oh, I love how there's like little houses oh. in the distance. What are those? I didn't like Jimmy when we watched this. I did not like Jimmy when we watched this because look at my next one. Yeah, you said I hope Jimmy dies. <laughs> uh. I said, look at my next one. Yeah. After 57. Yep. Why isn't she screaming yet? Okay, that is... That is, like, mega sadistic. What are they doing? We're having oh, no, a little I was saying off? that, uh, I hope Jimmy dies. I hate him. That's 58. Yep, yep. And that's right after I said that he's a legit psychopath. So, I was not liking Jimmy. Why does she scream again? What did he do in that scene? Why are you screaming so much? Yo, he was really cutting the rug, you might say. Loading circle! Anyway, what do we got? Um, rated X scene with Bugaboo. Waiting to see when that happens. I don't know. Um, is that what, like, when... I think it's when they all fall on him or something. Oh my god. There's bugs in this ideal neighborhood. In this expressionistic There's neighborhood. Bugs? This is uh this is called expressionism, all right? When like the houses are all wonky. Uh, look at Doctor Cabinet of Doctor Caligari. No, no expression. No, there's art. Art is certain, and that is not art. 
love how this neighborhood like has a weird very like american house set up where it's like underneath underneath like the porch patio you have like the weird gates it's like bro you got you all got snakes and crap living in there for sure well, it definitely is like a 2009-like neighborhood. It's definitely a neighborhood found in 2009, although this was made in 2004 or 3. 2002 or 3, really, because it's, um, they said that it came out in America um, in 2004, a year later after it aired in Canada and Europe. Ooh, you have a video about a premiere. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is it? Jimmy is so damn ridiculous. <laughs> Line 64. He is. I yeah. don't like him. Weird thing. Uh, man. He, he's a That's... hater, and I will be his hater. I love the way it feels to be a hater. To be a hater. <laughs> Jimmy and then you, the vampire husband, was a bit sus when he said monsters don't eat people. Monsters don't eat oh, people. Yeah. Well, the he was saying it. Like, have you ever seen Transylvania with Adam Sandler? Oh, yeah, where the first, like, the first one. Party rockers in the house tonight. Yeah, where they're like, we don't eat people and scare people anymore. Like, yeah. like they have that face where they where it's definitely like, no, they've had to stop. It, it, it is. You know, they still do it. They just have to be I, more discreet. I think this was like. This translated a lot better with, like, having commercial breaks. The whole, like, cutaway between, like, the party and the kids. Um, but when mm -hmm. you see it on, like, a DVD format, you're like, oh, this is not holding space for commercials. This is now a replacement for, like, the plot that was never there. I don't know. Um, well, cause just, just in my humble follow. opinion. Oh, Harry, what have they done to you, my boy? <laughs> well, definitely, like, I definitely think there was probably commercial breaks, because uh, when you watch, like, American Dad or any animation thing, and there's, like, a fade to black, and then it fades back, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, there's a commercial there. Like, that quick succession, that was where we were supposed to see a commercial, but because there's no ads, you just see that quick fade. Yeah, yeah. Yo, remember when VHS tapes um, had like commercials at the beginning that was pretty those different times where are we at? oh orson based let's say orson based. orson very based as he tries to like kiss hannah from behind and now we're looking at scully oh yeah, uh, yeah oh we're did. pointing the finger oh when he when he snaps his fingers or points the fingers he awakens harry the times where i couldn't be a jimmy hater yeah <laughs> uh Oh, he gonna eat all the snacks? Oh, no. Ooh, I want a, I want an apple dipped in white chocolate. Cause he's got like, he's got like a caramel apple that's all white and oozy looking. Ooh, where are they going? Where, where are they? How are they gonna play? Damn. Oh, Nadia, Nadia and her, uh, her so Nandor. Or not Nandor, her Matt Berry. <laughs> nah. Ruby, dear, you don't understand. I'm an old vampire. Exactly, yep. Nandor is Harry. In New York City. Harry, vampire couple, uh, threesome? Yo, we need to have, like, Nad we need to have Nadia voicing Ruby and Laszlo voicing Max. Absolutely. Also, whoa! 18 plus there. Anyway. Oh, what is up with his watch? Did he, was that like a pacemaker joke? What that was? Let's see. I assume. Scully with dance number after the vampire scare is so funny. The kids running made me chuckle. Oh my god. Anyway. Um, scary godmother base? Oh. Let's, okay, so apparently they're like, they're huddling together now. Because they're like... Guys, okay. look, someone just coded. We need to, like, figure out how to make this a lot nicer. More friendly, friendly. Harry is a little too, a little too 18, and we need to keep this at least, like, a 13 out of, out of 10. Harry, Harry's too handsome is what I meant. 
He's an 18 out of 10, dude. Oh my god. Hold the garlic! Oh my god. Yeah. Harry's, in Harry's insane. Let's see. We're at the point. Let me let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. You know, we've been, we've been hearing so many of your notes here. Let me go ahead and read some of my notes here. Um, look, I even I've pretty much been saying what I've what I've always said. Um, I like how Max and Ruby seem to be a foil to Katie and Daryl. And this movie, I think, if you're watching it, it might not dawn on you because I think it focuses a lot more on the party here. And like the kids standing outside the house are just a segue to be all like, "Hey, remember them? They're still there." But the party is what we're trying to focus on. But what's interesting is that, you know, Katie Katie and Daryl are this foil to Max and Ruby. Because Max and Ruby, of course, like each other. Katie and Daryl like each other. And, um... 18 out of 10. Definitely. Yeah. No. Um, there's just there's this interesting... Um, if you know, it's one of those things where if you watch it, you want it, you understand it. A little more. Um, dance montage, some of an um, homage to Scooby Doo. Yeah, I wrote. I wrote on my point fifty one is like they have sort of a montage to Scooby Doo, and then what's Katie? Then wants to go in and get Hannah. Yeah, Katie is like the older sister to Hannah. Really, realistically, like she, you sort of have this foreshadowing and apropos with Katie, like yeah, in real life, basically yours. being like I know her mine real scary so godmother. Amazing. So let me see. Well, let me see here, because now I'm going over my notes, and I just wanted to see what I wrote. So at sixty, I wrote Alabaster Romeo. Yeah, I guess, I guess, not Nadia calls not Laszlo her Alabaster Romeo, which is just cute, I guess. And uh, yeah, Max would be very cute. They're I said so they feel like a very proto and made for kids, Nadia Laszlo. Um, also, there's apparently a tarantula egg roll, which I'm like based. Um, Scully straight h hates Harry. I said warranted, but then you like Harry, so I'm like, oh man. Um, oh yeah, I said I, okay. So at 64, I yeah, said Harry... I said Harry foils Jimmy. Um, elaborate later. And then I wrote, um, so here's here's how I think, I think early on in the video, in this retrospect, I said, like, Harry and Jimmy have this interesting foil. And so what it is, is Her um, Harry and Jimmy both want to be the center of attention. Um, Harry and Jimmy have lasting consequences into the second movie, where at the end of it, Harry um, has to, like, do some work to pay off his debts to Scary Godmother because he ordered too much pizza that the skeleton demon pizza delivery guy like was all like okay you have to sign for it you have to pay with your soul or you have to pay off all this debt so he basically he financed dominoes which is like what's happening now these days in 2023 that's what halloween means to me it's financing dominoes and then uh jimmy of course has this consequence into the second movie where because he gets scared by the monsters what ends up happening is he's like uh yeah. sort of disturbed um and then you have uh you have this sort of interesting thing, and, and this is like kind of weird. I don't know. Like I don't. I don't mean this in like a, a criminal way, but it's just like Jimmy, quote unquote, hates little girls, um, whereas Harry, you know, likes Ophelia Tata and gets along with Hannah because Harry thinks like uh, Hannah is Ophelia Tata, the actress um, in, in the canon of Scary Godmother's World. Um, the vampire dead live puns are clever, yeah. aged decently. You know, every time like you know Orson is all like, "Ugh, I could just live." Um, or, you know, uh, Max being all like, oh, my, my beating heart, I, I'm alive, but in, like, a bad way. Um, oh, yeah, I wrote, Katie is based, grabs Jimmy by the lapels out of her worry for Hannah. Again, Katie seems to be this interesting foreshadowing where all along she's kind of had interests, uh, Hannah's interests at heart, um, and she's sort of like the real-life scary godmother, I guess. She's sort of the big sister to Hannah. Um... Jimmy says they shouldn't believe in monsters, but is ultimately scared by a distant wolf scream. Oh yeah, which is what we just segued through just now. Um, oh, here's the here's the pizza demon, and he's gonna be he's all like, scared godmother, and then he's all like, you could sign for it. Um, and so Jimmy says that he shouldn't believe in mon they shouldn't believe in monsters, but is ultimately scared by the wolf scream, indicating he's less less honest about his feelings and fears than the other kids. Really goes to say he was always scared of monsters, even before Scary Godmother 2. Yeah, like in Scary Godmother 2, there's this implication that like he's really freaked out by monsters now because you know getting scared at the end of this movie in the spook house. But like all along, he's actually kind of the scared, the most scared. Um, Good. And then there's. <laughs> And then there's some sort of tickle terrorized. tickle bugaboo, which we have to get to. Oh, no, I dropped your pumpkin. I've been fiddling with this, like, the white Casper pumpkin. Come back to me, baby. Oh, uh, yeah, the white pumpkin. 
I've been commenting. Uh, uh, oh, where are they go? Oh, they're go oh, they do the tickle bugaboo right here. I think this is what you were talking about, where you're like, uh, this is a rated X scene. Yeah, uh, it ain't a rated 37 X minutes, scene. you get a little bit of a treat, huh? So they, they raid him for all the money and then send him flying, and then Scary Godmothers are like, hey, uh, Harry, um, no pizza for you. So, and then we've got a. Uh... But it's his house! <laughs> is it is his, his house? house! I still don't, I still it's remember that. House. I think they said that, though. I think they it's said that. It's his house, because they, they, <laughs> tell, they tell us in the beginning, and then they're like, oh, we're just going to kick him out of his house. I love how the pizza's what? called Diablo Bros. That's actually aged well, because isn't there, like, there's, like, vegan chicken now from a thing called Morningstar Farms, which I'm just, like, bro, how is this not, like, how are, like, Christian, how are, like, evangelicals getting mad about Morningstar Farms? Because they're like, ah, oh, that's literally like loose. Oh, they are. We just, we just don't hear about it. I just don't hear about it. They're because not exactly it's probably at Costco. Insignificant. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The kids. But... Must up in oh yeah. So that that must happen in the next second here. Oh yeah, because they have this sort of talk where like Bugaboo, oh, he's got a little bit of an overbite, huh? He's all like, wait, is this the same Jimmy that says I like to gobble up little girls? And then Hannah's like, yeah. And he's like, I'm gonna scare him. He's on my route next week. Oh, there's the Lincoln joke, and like Orson, Orson looks guilty and. Or they've done the song and dance, and Bugaboo is like, "I scare children for a living." Absolutely. You are, you are a child. That's that same Jimmy, dude. That is in fact. Hey, what if what if we uh what if we uh do a little do a little time skip? Jimmy needs to be stopped. Well, he's he's about to be. He's about to be terrified. He's he's about to get he's about to get the devil scared out of him. Scared the devil out of him. Hey, about to get Stop me if you've heard it. this one before. Riddle hey, me this, Batman. How come you can say? <laughs> How come you can say? Uh, I don't know. What's the joke? Oh God! Oh God! Gato, it was scary. Oh, click, click, click. I love this. Oh, I love the weird Broadway number here. Um, let's see. H Harry's, of course, ironically the most scary. Yeah, I love how at the end, if you think about it, Harry's ironically the most scary. Um, because he just, like, loses his he mind is, at the end. Because he gets all hungry because he chases him out of the house or, or something weird like that. Uh, oh, yeah, like, right here. Shows up right here. They knock right into him, and he... Because he smells candy, and he starts, like, going berserk. I'm like, oh! Yeah, that's... That was in part of the script. It's, uh... It's like when someone gets a little, When someone doesn't walk silly during the silly montage of Funny Walks and Monty Python. It's, well, I mean, to be honest, they kicked him out of his house. They wouldn't let him have food. I'd be pretty <laughs> upset, too. Dude, he's hangry, dude. Oh yes, time to okay, go into the basement. That's notoriously the safest spot in these houses. I wrote, uh, Jimmy's all flexes and posturing. When they walk in, he's in front. When they go into the house, but when they're met with the vampire parents, he's behind them um, to sort of hide away from the vampires and the monsters. But then when um, when he's sort of in the most hurry to get out, he's in front of them again when they rush out. I think that's that's symbolic of something. Um, and then... Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I wrote... I wrote. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Uh, I wrote, safety in the basement? Nah. Cuz bugaboo. They're all like, what's that breathing? Uh, the thousand eyes restrict. That's a, a Yu-Gi-Oh! fusion monster. It requires relinquished and uh, polymerization, obviously. Oh, no, mine eyes! Obviously. Uh, I think uh, Daryl screams, Hannah, we need you... Ass. Uh, I wrote on 76, all the monsters are goofily proud, then go to ambush Harry, much in the same way they set up the scare charade to scare Jimmy and co. Another Jimmy x Harry foil duality. Yeah, like, it's like, um, so they all run out as Hannah leads them out of the way. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, all the monsters are proud, but then they sort of ambush Harry at the end, because he makes some sort of remark, and they're like, hey, you ate all our food. 
Um, and it's much in the same way that, like, you know, Jimmy's sort of seen as this, uh, as this bunghole. TP for my bunghole. They're both. Scary Godmother's a bully. Right. She's a little species of. Uh, scary Godmother's a bully? Oh my god. Yo. Yo. That's the hot she's take. She's a species. The hot take in this retrospect. She's here. a species. Because like, she's all nice to the yeah. skeleton and the human looking monster. Yeah, exactly. She likes the, like, the humanoids. Yeah. But the moment it's like Bugaboo or like Harry, she's like, hmm. Because even with Bugaboo, she's like, yeah, he scares people. It's fucking weird. <laughs> but he's harmless, I swear. Yeah, like, and then with Harry, she's all, like, she's all like, screw this guy. Yeah, I and it's like, shoes are like huge. what are you, a species? Yeah, because she's, I mean, she has to have something, uh, she has to have a fatal flaw. She's related to Jenny. <laughs> She's got to have a fatal flaw. Fatal yeah, flaw. Has a fatal Hannah flaw. has Hannah has big feet. There you go. Yeah, that's her fatal flaw. She's eight. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's her nose or her or you know her face. It's her big yeah. ass shoes. Oh my god. I have some mercy. And then I say I Hannah and class. Jimmy. Right. I say on point seventy seven, Hannah and Jimmy seem to have a reverse <laughs> narrative. Jimmy starts off dishonest about his feelings and ends up worse for wear, getting more scared by the monsters. Hannah is candid and emotional and admits that the monsters are scary at first, but goes around and ends up, uh, comes back around and ends up learning about them and becoming a leader at the end of it. That's, and that's the deep lesson here, you know? So what are some closing thoughts then? What are some closing thoughts right now on the first movie um, before, you know, we, we work on the second movie for, for next Halloween, you know? Because I think uh, the ending song is definitely a score. That sort of dance bop um, sort of do, 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 um, is, like, really cool. Um, let's see. It should have showed more gravestones for the cutaway scenes. I, it's just my personal opinion there. Um, just a taste thing. Um, uh, and they, you know, again, we all agree. Like, they lean way too hard into Jimmy hating Hannah. Um, and then I think it could have been remastered. I, I, think, I think we are, as in, like... I want a remake. We need a remake. It's been too long. Uh, this, this movie has uh, still a cult following. Um, it's sort of been kept alive with internet memes and stuff. And, uh, and you know, nostalgia uh, with, you know, Gen Z millennials. Um, and then, again, you know, I, I think it sort of is the hero's journey without really any plot. It's just, you know, cut away, cut away, cut away. You know, kids at the spook house, Hannah at the party, kids at the spook house, Hannah at the party. And then, um, you know, it's more of Hannah discovering the differences in the different monsters and how, you know, they're all nice and they have their human qualities and stuff. And, you know, it's sort of that sort of, you know, social commentary is sort of child morality of like, you know, um, you know, learn how to get along with different people and stuff like that. Um, and that ultimately, you know, they're clearly more human than like, you know, Jimmy, right? Because they're, they're clearly, they have endearments and habits and impulses, but like, you know, they're ultimately, like, nicer to her and much more understanding than, obviously, like, Jimmy is. Um, but uh, uh, it, it definitely doesn't seem to really have a plot. Um, it, but it's still, like, this hero's journey because Hannah, of course, like, you know, goes out and sort of, you know, she, she faces the dragon of chaos and, and comes back into the, the bosom of Abraham, right? Because she, um, she, of course, like, you know, she does her whole nine yards of meeting these people and then becoming better for it. So, uh, what are your closing thoughts? Um, I definitely would have, like, you know, an establishing shot of, you know, just the relationship between, or at least the beginning characters. Because uh, I had no idea who the fuck they were when I first watched it. Um, and then I would have liked the pacing to be more even. I definitely do think it needs a remake or at least a whole new movie of it uh, was like today's animation and stuff because it would be it would work better for Scary Godmother than the animation they tried. Um, I definitely do think that they could um, because they want us to like Scary Godmother and yet she's insanely mean to Harry. And so I feel like they should take that out <laughs> if you want us to like her. They should um, recontextualize Harry and I Scary definitely Godmother. Think that, 
Well, that ain't not so scary godmother herself, because it's like they're preaching that they love each other, and then they're like in a complete ass to Harry. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, you, you know... What like, a hot it's, take. It's like it's I've a never heard this message. thing. This is, we, we are going to make some waves in the SGM community, so... At least you are. Oh, she well. said it, not me. I mean, she's um, a, let's see. She's a, she's a little bit of a bitch. I mean, she's like, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, ass God. In the guy's own house. Um, let's see. Then you have, and what? so on your last she point here at 80, me. you have Hannah is such a G. I love her. And then you have Mafia <laughs> ending. What do you mean by Mafia ending? Big stuff. Because they literally sat there and the kids come in the house and they're like fucking scaring them. Like mafia bosses, Yo, that's and based. then Harry almost eats one of them. So it's definitely yeah. a mafia style ending for a kids movie. Yeah. So you know it's a little bit like. Well, uh, okay. I can't wait to die some more on sandbox mode in Blue Star Defense Six. Well, everyone, uh, I guess that's gonna have to be it. Um, we will get to the. Leave a comment down below if you want us to get to the second movie. Like, this year, or at least in the season of winter, like, maybe, like, in February of 2024, um, or if you, you know, obviously want to save that for next Halloween, you know, uh, that'll be, you know, a fun little, fun little doozy. And thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and go ahead, check out Neo Scary Godmother to watch the Scary Godmother movies. And, yeah, you show this, show this, you know, community and this cult classic some love and support. Because a remake is very much needed, <laughs> so <laughs> needed. And I love it. I love needed, it. We needed, love it. And this is this is a love letter. This is coming story. from people who who are proud of it. Um, but but want it to. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out the retrospect. We said a lot of nonsense there. A lot of it was in the moment, impromptu, but it was based off of a Google Doc that we were looking at from the last time we had watched the movie and taken a lot of notes. I love Scary Godmother 1, and I can't wait to do the next retrospect next year for Scary Godmother 2. This movie is even dear to my heart. And alas, happy Halloween. And a shout out to Neo Scary Godmother, and of course, the one, the only, Jill Thompson. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.